what does that look like? What what are the things I need to change, right? And I, what my kind of um, uh, top things that I, when I um, coach women and they come to me and they're they're struggling with that, right? There's that kind of that same scenario is, number one, I absolutely, my first question is, well, how much are you eating, right? Or are you eating enough food? Because so many women, especially women that have been stuck kind of in the dieting vortex, as I like to call it, for so many years, what they don't realize because they've been fed that that message of calories in calories out which again that there is some there's definitely some science behind that and that's that is true calorie reduction all of that however i think the message that is not said a lot is that you you can cut your calories to a point of no return meaning you you start you keep cutting you, what you're intaking and your body is so intuitive it will adjust your me- metabolism adjusts and when you get to the point where you are eating uh continually eating less than what your body needs, your metabolism is going to slow down. You're going to halt. You're not going to be losing any weight. So always, you know, because of our body is changing, always asking women, you know, are they eating enough food? I, I absolutely recommend strength training even more. So I get asked all the time, women over 40, how should we be exercising? And even more so because in order to combat the drop in the metabolism, you absolutely need to start doing some strength training that is going to help fight that. And then, you know, the other thing that I, um, that I say is really important, I think for women over 40 is that you can no longer afford uh, to look at food as just calories in, calories in and calories out. The quality of food that you're putting into your body absolutely matters. It's always mattered, but when you're in your 20s, your 30s, or whatever, you know, there's a little bit more flexibility there. You're not having a lot of the same, you know, the hormonal changes and all of that. And so it's even more so important now that you are focusing on foods that are going to fuel your body. Um, you know, reducing a lot of the processed and packaged foods, reducing a lot of the sugar in your diet. And that is kind of more of like a clean eating lifestyle, but that's how you use food as medicine to balance your hormones naturally as best as possible, um, to, to fight off disease, to fight off inflammation. So I definitely think that yes, our body is, is changing over 40 and there's some really some things have to change you can't keep doing what you've been doing all along because you you'll get to the point where you realize it's not working so well you know i think that the women over 40 age group you know let's just say we're kind of the slim fast generation right so you're dealing with this programming of 1200 calories and in, in two shakes and a salad <laughs> you know that's kind of this programming that we have and and many of us have had experiences where that has worked for weight loss right but then there's that yo-yo dieting and you're in all of that and then we've come into this newer age of organic food and and learning more about superfoods and processed foods and you know saturated unsaturated i mean we have so much knowledge now that i think what happens is you went from this super simplified two shakes and a salad to like all of you know if you're not getting your macros blended with your superfoods with your ca- right calories it's not too little not too much da, da, da. like there's so many apps and things and i think that it's all to say that that's why having a really great coach can be really helpful because we're if we're not specialists and we take this input, it's very hard to process it to make it be a, a program that specifically works for you because it can work for other people. And the other thing I wanted to say, because, okay, you guys, in two less than two weeks, I'm going to be 51. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have gone through exactly what Amber is describing with having a kid and dealing with that, getting into strength training and deal with that, figuring out what you, good for you foods are and, you know, and not good for you foods are. Um, and I feel like one of the things, so I'm like on a high horse about this because it, it really is so crucial and the sooner that you can get into it the better but that it's confusing i i have to say amber and amanda both i'm still confused at 51 what works for me i know that i have some things that totally do but there is that temptation to resort back to two shakes and salad okay because some of it gets overwhelming and so i do think having coaching to work on your specific situation and body style. You know, are you an ectomorph, mesomorph, or endomorph body style? A lot of people don't understand that. Maybe learning your Ayurvedic doshas. You know, there's all these layers of knowledge that can can be used to help you, but boy, is it confusing. 
So I imagine you run into that a lot, Amber. I mean, absolutely. You know, I think that I, I do agree that we we are uh, all individuals and what works for one uh, definitely does not work for the other. I think how I feel about that, though, is that, you know, find something, though, that you are going to stick to and make it a lifestyle, whether that is Ayurvedic medicine, where whether that is you decide that keto is what is your jam, right? I think the problem is, is that we have so overcomplicated it because we are impatient. We, a lot of times we don't take care of our body on a consistent basis. We're not able to be very consistent. Then we wake up one day and we're like, oh my gosh, I got to shed 10, 20 pounds or whatever it is. And we jump from one thing to the next. And when you, when your expectations are that you are going to drop those 10 or 20 pounds in a month or whatever, you are being way too restrictive to ever possibly sustain that long term. And what I've found is you're right. There's a lot of things that can work, but it really comes down honestly to just being consistent. When you are a little less perfect, when you're a little less perfect, you can be a hell of a lot more consistent. Right. And so, you know, that, yes. yeah, I I mean, that's really what it is. And what happens is, is that we start something and we're impatient. We get, get, go all in and we're like, okay, I'm going to go on a diet or whatever it is. I'm going to eat really well. And we're like three weeks in and we're like, man, this sucks. I haven't allowed myself anything and I'm not seeing very many results. And then you get off and you want to go to the next thing. And in reality, if you would just stick with it and allow yourself, uh, you know, that pizza on the Friday night, and then, you know, you're, you're eating pretty well, 80% of the time and just stick with it and be patient then that, that is the answer. That is the key. And so there are a lot of different things at work, but a lot of people lack the patience to be consistent for sure. Hi guys, it's Amanda from Beauty and the Beef podcast. I hope you've enjoyed listening to all our episodes. So if you enjoy the podcast, you can support us by liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. If you're listening to this anywhere else, you can also just like us. We like to know what your opinion is on any of our topics. So please, please, please comment or you can contact us at beautyandthebeat at gmail.com.